Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Physiology Made Easy with me, Dr. Amir Sandhu. Now in today's special sports nutrition series, we're going to be talking about the importance of carbohydrates for maximizing endurance performance. Now, the video is aimed at athletes who regularly compete uh, and who want to look at nutritional strategies to ensure that they can get the most out of their performance. But it's also very valid to recreational athletes as well. So the many of us who take part in endurance uh, exercise and want to understand more about the scientific uh, evidence-based information on how we can fuel ourselves to adequately perform during exercise. So let's get straight into it. Um, so what I want you to really get out of today's presentation is to be, be able to understand the importance of carbohydrates and how they actually, actually contribute to increasing our muscle and liver glycogen stores. So the carbohydrates that we consume, how they actually go on to uh, top up the levels in our muscle and glycogen and how that's then used during exercise. We're also going to look at how uh, the exercise intensity and the duration of exercise uh, impacts upon carbohydrate usage uh, to fuel uh, the muscle contractions during exercise. Uh, and we're going to look at carbohydrate intake, particularly in terms of exercise performance and recovery. So if you're an athlete or you're a coach working with an athlete, it's very important to be able to uh, maximize the carbohydrate intake before uh, and also after the training session. And if you're an athlete, you want to maximize the carbohydrate that you're also taking during an event as well and all of this is to stop you getting fatigued and to be able to maintain a high enough exercise intensity for as long as period as possible. Uh, so we we'll have a look at the training diet as well and the amount of carbohydrates you actually need, the, the quantity and all of that information will be from uh, the scientific literature. Right, okay, so first we, we just need to make a, a simple definition of what carbohydrates are, and carbohydrates can be split into two different types. So we've got complex carbohydrates and we've got simple carbohydrates as well, and what we've really got to try and do is get a combination of both uh, in our diet. The com complex carbohydrates, we won't get into the biochemistry or the, or the composition of it, but they're made up of long chains of uh, sugar molecules. Uh, they take much longer time to be broken down in the body as well, so they can take a good couple of hours. Uh, they're not always very sweet, so think about um, uh, some of the vegetables like potatoes that, are, uh, that have high carbohydrate levels, bread as well, rice, etc. Uh, and because they take time to, to digest, they increase your blood glucose levels over a, a longer period of time. Okay, so you don't get an instant increase in your blood glucose levels. It's very much a, a source of long-term energy. Uh, and consequently, because of the nature of their composition, they make you feel fuller for longer as well. Now, simple carbohydrates, short chain of sugar molecules, so that's where they differ to the complex carbohydrates. They're very easy to digest, so you, know, you have a banana or an apple, it gets processed quite quickly. Quite often, simple carbohydrates are quite sweet, uh, and things like cakes, biscuits, pastries, chocolate, they come into simple carbohydrates as well. And obviously, because they, they, they break down quite quickly, they increase your blood sugar levels very, very, very quickly as well. Uh, and essentially, sometime, in some instances, they can cause that crashing feeling that we get when we uh, have something very sweet and then we might do some physical activity. Uh, because when the glucose levels are increased in our blood, we have in insulin released by the pancreas, which tries to get that glucose out of the blood to be stored in the muscle or the liver. Uh, and so you can, quite, you can get a spike in the glucose, but then it can dip down almost uh, as quick as it, as it increased. So really you want to increase both. Those are the types, and we'll have a look at some food examples towards the end of the presentation. Now, in terms of where carbohydrates is stored, so you, know, you have a, uh, a diet which has got adequate amounts of carbohydrate, well, that, what's going to happen is that carbohydrate is gonna be stored in either your liver or in your muscle. And it's gonna be stored as uh, a, a, a molecule called glycogen. So the stored form of carbohydrates in our body is uh, glycogen. And essentially what happens is that glycogen stays in that form until it's actually needed to produce energy. So for example, when you start to do exercise uh, and you increase the intensity of that exercise, then what will happen is that the glycogen will undergo a series of uh, enzymatic uh, chemical reactions, biochemical reactions. They will release blood glucose. That blood glucose will travel to the muscle that needs it and it will produce a molecule called adenosine triphosphate or ATP. Now ATP is basically the usable form of 
energy in our body. It's like the energy currency, as it were. Uh, so that's what happens in the process there. In the muscle, you have a very similar process where glycogen is, is broken down, um, but the energy is released within the muscle and it's quite immediate. Now, generally, what we tend to find is that the, um, the, the store of glycogen is the greatest in the muscle. So if we have a look at this table here, uh, which is adapted from a scientific publication, we can actually see that muscle glycogen stores are around about 500 grams, uh, and we have uh, a slightly smaller amount of liver uh, glycogen, so that's about 110 grams. So we have lots of glycogen stored in our muscle. So anytime we eat something, uh, uh, anytime we intake carbohydrates, it will get stored in one of these two locations. Some of the glucose will be transported around in the blood to uh, cells that need it for metabolism. Now, what's interesting here is that the carbohydrate that we have the levels, the amount, is so much um, smaller than the amount of fat that we store. Okay, so fat is much more easily stored in our body, and there is a reason for that. Fat actually provides much more calories when it's broken down. So when you think about uh, a molecule of carbohydrate and a molecule of fat, well, when the carbohydrate is broken down, it might only provide a small amount of energy, whereas the fat molecule is gonna be much more energy dense, and it's why we can actually go for many days without food, because the fat will start to uh, be oxidized and it will start to give lots of energy to the cells, but it's not the case with carbohydrates. So we tend to store uh, a lot more uh, fat in our body because it serves a purpose so that if we go without food, then we have enough energy reserves. But we can see that we have uh, quite a lot of uh, fat storage underneath our skin and viscerally around our abdominal organs as well. And then we have some fat that's interspersed in our muscle fibers as well. And that fat is of often, uh, it comes into use when you do uh, long duration, low intensity exercise. So for example, think about uh, you know, doing a marathon, you're probably using intramuscular uh, fat stores as well to produce some of the energy. So that's quite, uh, the, the, reason, the, the illustration for this slide, that contrast there, is basically to highlight that we don't have that much stored uh, glycogen in our liver and muscle, so we need to make sure that we top it up as much as possible after our training sessions and also after major competitions as well. Now, carbohydrate intake is actually extremely important because anybody that's done uh, an endurance event, uh, a long duration endurance event, and, and it's been quite intense, will have hit the wall. Okay, And if you've never experienced hitting the wall, it's literally like running out of fuel. It's like a car that just stops and it can't go until it's topped up with further fuel. So in the case of this marathon runner here, he's literally, his body's shut down, he's got severe fatigue, and it's because his muscle and liver glycogen stores have become completely depleted. They can no longer provide the energy for his muscles, to, to, for his muscle contractions. Uh, so his body is shut down. So what the athlete needs to do is to protect themselves from hitting the wall. They need to make sure that their stored glycogen is as high as possible. So this is a really strong reason to make sure that your glycogen levels are topped up. Your carbohydrates are something that you give due consideration to if you're an athlete that's competing at, at a high level. So the, the, the importance of this slide is to, uh, to kind of show you the importance of exercise intensity, so how hard you're actually exercising and what impact that has on the type of fuel that your body is going to be using to produce energy. Now generally, and as we can see in this figure here, is if your exercise intensity is greater, so we can see the yellow line just here. So if the exercise intensity uh, is high, uh, studies have actually shown your leg glucose uptake is going to be obviously uh, greater. It's actually shown by the leg glucose uptake, but essentially what it's showing is that uh, when you have very intense exercise, then you're gonna be using carbohydrate as a uh, fuel source, okay? And where, when you do mild or moderate intensity exercises, so anywhere between 20 to 40% VO2 max, uh, so, you know, very mild, moderate intensities. Uh, most of the energy is going to come from fat. Uh, and then as we start progressing to the more moderate uh, intensity levels, then essentially what happens is we use a combination of carbohydrates and fats. And then when we get to the very intense portions, uh, we, so typically around about 75% VO2 of your VO2 max, uh, that's where most of the energy is from carbohydrates. So this is a very intense 
um, uh, intensity. This is quite a high intensity, uh, something where you will really be pushing yourself quite hard. Most of the energy will be coming from that glycogen breaking down uh, in your muscle and in your liver as well. Now, it's extremely important that if your carbohydrate levels aren't high to begin with and they drop quite uh, markedly, then you have to drop your exercise intensity so that fat oxidation can start providing some of the, the energy as well to the muscle, okay? If you don't do that, then obviously you're gonna get um, severe fatigue. So as soon as your carbohydrate levels are depleted, then basically you need to, uh, or it, it will just be a case of it will automatically happen. You won't be able to exercise as hard, your intensity will drop and so essentially you won't be getting the training stimulus needed uh, or you'll, you'll have a uh, poor performance in the competition as well. So what does this mean for the coach and for the athlete? So in these pictures here, we have some examples of some professional athletes. Some of them are professional athletes who uh, perform very intense training sessions. So they're consuming uh, a large amount of that glycogen to produce uh, energy for the muscle contractions. So essentially, after the training session, they're going to have very low amounts of stored glycogen and, uh, in the muscle and the liver, okay? So what they need to do is they need to make sure that before the next training session, they consume high amounts of carbohydrates so those stools are replenished. Because if those stools are not replenished, then we get into a position uh, that's mentioned in this point here, they won't be able to have a, a, a high intensity subsequent training session because their carbohydrate stores aren't replenished enough. Their training level will drop, which means their training stimulus will be lower and they won't get the physiological adaptations to the training. So it's very important that, the, that we are adequately refueling ourselves with carbohydrates after intense training sessions so that we have enough fuel to be able to perform at a high level in subsequent training sessions. And when you think about a training camp for uh, a professional athlete, it's very long, it's very grueling. So the nutrition is something that has to be, the nutrition and the recovery has to be something that's uh, almost as important as the training itself. Okay, so in terms of the training diet then, so how much carbohydrates should you get? So uh, the information that I'm presenting on this slide is from uh, the evidence-based guidelines, uh, references in the corner here, but I'll also put the link uh, in the comments of this, uh, sorry, in the description of this YouTube video as well. Uh, but essentially, we want to consume around about 10 to 12, kilo, uh, 10 to 12 grams per kilogram body mass, okay? So uh, when you're in the training phase, you want to make sure that you're getting this amount of carbohydrates at least 36 to 48 hours before um, your, your next training session or, or a competition even as well. So if we take an average size male, so 75 kilogram male, uh, and we take the upper value there, we times um, the, their, their uh, body weight with the amount of carbohydrate they need per kilo of their body weight, we're coming up to about 900 grams of carbohydrates. Now, that is quite a large intake. That's qu you know, quite a lot of uh, carbohydrates that you need to consume. Now, in terms of the specific amount, if you're a professional athlete, then obviously it's likely that you will have access to a nutritionist. So you need to work with the nutritionist uh, who'll be able to uh, really tweak that figure based on the type of sport you're doing, uh, the phase of the training cycle as well, the gender, the environmental conditions, whether you've got any other health conditions. So there'll be a whole host of other factors that could be considered. If you don't have a nutritionist, then you need to think about um, how you actually feel during competition, how you actually feel during training sessions. And if you're still feeling fatigued, then you need to obviously tweak this, uh, tweak this to make sure that you're trying to get the maximum uh, performance out of your training sessions and competition as well. Now, that's quite a large number. So how would you actually achieve all of that carbohydrates? Well, it's very important that you increase the amount of times that you eat in a given day, and you try to increase the portion sizes as well. That's the only way that you're going to be able to get uh, the amount of carbohydrate that you need uh, into, uh, to be stored as uh, glycogen in the muscle and the liver. Now, one of the things that you could do is if you are t taking part in heavy training, um, so you are in that kind of, um, uh, you know, in the, in the thick of it in terms of the training phase, you need to make sure that you're eating more than three meals per day. You need to try and take every opportunity that you can to eat. So you're, you're constantly taking on carbohydrates along with your other nutri nutrients as well. And when you finish your workout, then try to eat 
as close as possible to when you end your training session so that you can replenish those stores quite quickly. Uh, and also some athletes often eat a snack before sleeping as well. Uh, so that's another good way to try and top up those glycogen stores as well. In terms of examples, foods, bread, cereals, uh, grains, legumes, there's a whole host, vegetables, lots of vegetables are high, have high amounts of carbohydrates as do fruits. Um, examples are available uh, in most dietetic guidelines of the types of uh, carbohydrates that you need. But remember, it's a, it's a combination of complex and uh, simple carbohydrates that you need in your diet to meet these amounts. Okay, so I wanted to highlight how important getting that carbohydrate intake is on performance. So this is a figure which is adapted from a study done in 1967 by Bergstrom and colleagues. And essentially it was a, a very interesting study and they basically showed that the high carbohydrate diets will obviously result in greater muscle glycogen content. So the initial muscle glycogen content before uh, a cycling to exhaustion exercise is higher. And that con corresponds to a greater time to exhaustion compared to a normal diet which has you know, moderate amounts of uh, carbohydrate and a diet which has very low carbohydrates and lots of fat. So uh, a diet which has low carbs is going to have a very a poor cycle time to exhaustion, so they'll be um, uh, stopping quite quickly. A moderate diet is marginally better, but by far the, the best performance in terms of cycle time to exhaustion was seen in the high carbohydrate diet. So uh, that's quite an important and quite a uh, uh, a visual representation of how important carbohydrate is for endurance performance. And again, another study uh, published in the 90s supports that so having carbohydrates just a few hours before exercise can increase the muscle glycogen stores. And remember, most of the glycogen is stored in the muscle. Uh, the oxidation um, of that carbohydrate, so the breakdown of that glycogen to produce ATP, uh, and subsequently that also improves cycle time to exhaustion as well. So you've got to make sure that you're adequately fueled uh, in order to, get the, to have the best performance. So we've talked about carbohydrate before a session and after a session as well. Uh, what would you actually do during exercise as well? So whilst you're actually competing, now this is quite a challenging issue for some athletes because not everybody is able to take on fluid, carbohydrate fluids or food during an event. Sometimes that's just uh, not permitted and you've got to uh, only take those uh, uh, um, beverages or food during uh, an interval period. But you really want to think about the duration. So this is a table that I've adapted from a very recent publication by Beck and colleagues. Uh, and they had this very nice uh, summary table about the carbohydrates that you should be taking during an event. And it's related to the duration. So if you are doing something which is about 30 to 75 minutes, um, you don't actually need large amounts of carbohydrates. Uh, so you can actually, evidence has shown that you can take small amounts of mouth rinse, which contains carbohydrates, and that can uh, improve performance, lower perception of fatigue, etc. But as you start to go to the more typical durations for endurance sports, like um, uh, one or two hours, so we're talking about team sports, football, um, then your, the recommended carbohydrate intake per hour is about 30 grams. And in a sport like football, you've got to think about that during the half time period. So what are you going to be fueling yourself up with during the half time period so that you can be fresh uh, and you can perform just as good in the second half of the game. So it's about 30 grams. And as the, we can see that as the duration increases, so we're getting to marathon and then half Ironman triathlons, etc., the amount of carbohydrate required per hour also increases as well. Uh, and endurance sports are good because you do have drink stations and you have ample opportunities to take on board um, uh, carbohydrates. So it's something that you really need to, to, to consider if you don't already. If you find that you don't need carbohydrates and it, you know, it, it doesn't affect your performance and you're still doing really good, um, you don't have to take carbohydrates during an event. But if by doing so you do notice improvements, then obviously it makes it's common sense to, to consider that as a, as a strategy for your fueling. So that's everything for today's video. Um, 
it's really just a, uh, a, an overview of how carbohydrate is important for increasing muscle and glycogen stores and the idea is to try and help as many athletes and coaches out there. Um, the optimum loading strategy is about 10 to 12 grams per kilogram body mass uh, and you want to consume that about 36 to 48 hours before a training session or competition um, and also to try and consider carbohydrate intake uh, during the event as well and the whole idea is to try and delay uh, fatigue occurring so that you can perform uh, as a high level as possible for as long as possible. So I hope that you found uh, the information in today's video very useful. Uh, please do join me again where I'll talk about another uh, nutritional element that you should be including in your diet. Uh, I'll hopefully see you soon.